All right, everybody, welcome to the secret history living in your aquarium. Today, this is not my show whatsoever. This is my buddy Chase, and uh, he has one heck of a high tech setup with really beautiful sea life. It looks like you have like a 300 gallon tank worth of stuff in like, is that a 50 or? It's 70 total. Gallons. 70, oh, with the sump and everything. Yeah. But I mean, it looks like you got a dialysis machine and a, you know, 1940s computer and a robot. I mean, it just, you'll have to, we'll have to go through it and talk about it. But I mean, some of these creatures are really cool. And we've got a UV filter that he let me use over my phone. And uh, here you can see the, some of the fish that are in here too, but we'll, we'll feed them and, uh, and show you the rest and we'll talk about what all is going on here. So, all right, man, how did you get into this so, setup? <laughs> started with a little tank upstairs, you know, some, did a little reef upstairs and then got into actually wanting to frag and sell coral. So this is just a frag setup. It's not really considered a display but I kind of display it out to whoever wants to, but this is basically just a grow out. It's a farm tank. Um, pretty basic setup in the saltwater world. I know none of you guys, well, maybe some of you guys, but a lot of you guys are in the freshwater side, yeah. which is a lot easier. But the saltwater people in here will know that it's a pretty common setup. It's got some nice stuff on it. There's some nice corals in it. And Very it's cool. a working tank, so it's not meant to be pretty. I mean, so it's meant to grow things, yep, basically. It's basically, just the coral grow out. So, just so people who don't understand frags and and those that means fragment of coral. Yeah. Um, how much would like you know one of these run? Like, is could you like a range maybe of like what? I mean, you can get like cheaper stuff like these would be like twenty bucks for a piece of this, and then you can get into the higher end stuff that like this is an unnamed coral. Oh wow. That hasn't even been named in the hobby yet. Hold on, let me see here with no waves going. And something like, oh yeah. Something like that right now. Wow. I mean, it's priceless because yeah. I mean, you set your price basically. And I mean, some of these frags, there's, there's a couple out there that get upwards of two, three hundred dollars for a little piece like that. Wow. So. I mean, we're talking like almost gold prices. <laughs> yes, some of the corals out there, especially the ones that get hyped up. I mean, it's like everything else. You get a hype behind something. Sure. It's the price. Insane. Sure. And the rare stuff, you know, I mean, we don't have any idea what everything is out in the ocean. So like, there's new corals coming in daily even that we're probably, nobody's ever even seen. We're probably losing new corals daily too, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we do what we can. The more the stuff that we can actually grow and frag out in the home aquarium is less that comes out of the oceans. Right. Oh, you got little hermit crab. Are those snails or hermit crabs? Hermit or? crabs. Oh, are nice. Vital cleaning part of it. So the whole thing, you have to build a little ecosystem in here. So. Okay. So like with planted tanks, I've always thought like snails are in essential, and you know, mm -hmm. certain little uh, microflora and fauna like so algae. So these are the snail and, and shrimp of the saltwater world. Oh, okay. You just go with little hermit crabs and other cleanup crew. That's okay. what it's called. It's a cleanup crew. So they're going to eat nice. anything the fish don't get. So they eat like wasted food particles. Wasted then. food, fish waste, oh, anything okay. else that's in there that gets caught in the stuff that the flow won't get out, they're going to handle. Nice. And then do you have an equivalent of like, say, shrimp where like, or I mean, uh, snails where they would clean the glass and stuff? Yep. Or? So the other ones you see are big snails like this guy that's hiding right there. Wow. I mean, There's, everything's alive in this tank. It's you crazy. You can see in the corners here some oh, yeah. actual saltwater nearite snails. Oh, right. Yeah. So. And then trochus and stuff. So there's snails all over it. They're the ones that go through the glass and everything. Nice. So these are... Um, through the glass? What do you mean by that? They go across the glass. Please. Oh, okay. I was like, can they drill through it? <laughs> like, is there some evil core or evil snail in that salt water hobby? Wow. So, I mean, I see what looks like sea anemones up here. Yep, and... these are sea anemones back here. Wow. These are mostly on this tray. It's going to be soft corals. These are all called zoanthids. Zoanthids. And they come any flavor or color you could ever imagine. And what does that mean exactly? So, like, uh, it's their classification. Okay, so they're like all related to each other. Yep, taxon, they're, they're taxonomic. all the same 
species, but they have such a variety of colors and stuff that different parts of the reef will have different ones, and that's just how they... Oh, nice. But the way that their taxonomy works is if you split that colony in half, it won't grow another color. It'll just keep growing that one. Okay, so they're kind of like clones, like mushrooms yep. then. So sometimes they come in with a bunch of different colors on a frag plug and you split off the single ones that you want and they'll reproduce into that color. Oh wow, so if you have, do you have any examples of 211 right now? Or? Um, I don't, because the, the last one that did come in was two was these green ones and these ones came in. Oh wow, they the came together, color. huh? And there was only two heads of green on it, and that's what came from Gotcha. Now, why is this up here in a little box? So these are mushroom, baby mushroom corals in there. And they're okay. in there because once they... So they do both. They'll actually split in half, like okay. a sea anemone does. And All they'll right. also leave pieces of their foot around as they walk. And wow. the pieces of their foot become babies. And wow. They'll actually dislodge and float around. So you catch them and put them in there so that they'll grab onto a piece of rubble rock in there. Okay. And then once they're grabbed on, they can come down. Wow. And so then they're, are they related to these mushrooms yep. down here? All mushrooms are pretty much closely related. So they're just, uh, again, any flavor color you can imagine. Um, these are considered like designer mushrooms. They're called a uh, sun kiss bounce. And so, do they grow in that pattern just naturally? Yep. And so, can you clone, like, or I mean, like, replicate any little piece? Like, how big of a piece do you need in theory? You could cut him right now into four, into, like, a pizza. Actually, you could cut him like a pizza right now. As long as you get a piece of his mouth on each of the pieces, okay. it'll close up and become a small mushroom. Wow. That's super cool. And then, what about these, like, feathery looking organisms here. So these are clove polyps. They come in multiple different colors too. This is a rare, That's rarer super one pretty. with the orange tips, but they're mostly found with red tips, really, really bright red tips. So are they like um, sea anemones in that like they have little harpoons that, or little no, graspers? they're, they're or? Most more related to stuff like these, which are just like pulsing exenia and anthelia. Oh, wow. So they're a soft coral. They're kind of a nuisance sometimes because they can, if you let them go, they'll just take over. They everything. can spread like a whole corn. But they don't sting. They don't. They don't do anything. They're really just a neutral coral. And is that the same species down there at the bottom? Yep. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna no, put my good. hands in the tank. But. And then uh, you can see the pulsing because there's no water flow right now. Okay. That's where they get their name. They're actually making their own water flow. Wow. Whereas like Anthelia, you can oh, see yeah. they're a little different. But there's the same. same basic family of soft polyp. And so they just like pulse like that, huh? Yep, they're creating their own water flow. Wow. They they like to live in tide pools and stuff where there sometimes doesn't flow for a couple of hours. So can they um, live in a range of temperatures then I would assume because of that? Or? Yeah, they can. I mean, they, they Probably sometimes they even get exposed to air if the tide goes out. Oh wow. Lots of corals do. So do you need to raise and lower the water in here at all? Like that's no, not this, essential this at all? this runs at a pretty constant. Unless nice. we're in feed mode like we are now, there's no flow going on. But it actually will rise up another half inch. Cool. So, and then the fish in here, I mean, you feed them food too, or do they eat yep. some byproduct also of what's going on in here? So the tangs, the tangs are a working fish. They're, they have teeth. So okay. They can, uh, scrape algae off of everything. That's their whole. Very cool. And then uh, the six line we're asked who's hiding back there. He's more of pest control. There he comes for a little shot. Oh yeah. They're more of pest control. They can get in and get the little. Uh, Copiopods and stuff that are living amongst everything. Oh, yeah. Little worms and stuff, sometimes pests, sometimes not, but they keep that population in check. So, the equivalent of like planaria in freshwater almost? Yes, they're the ones that go around. We have a thing called Aptasia that's a pest anemone that can get pretty rampant. Um, he so, won't touch it, but there's, there's other natural things we can do. Shrimp that'll eat them. There's Aptasia eating fish. Oh, that's cool. Your clownfish can get up into the yep. sea anemone trough, huh? Yep, and he's, uh, so the black ones are actually, they're called damsels, but they're very closely related to clowns. Okay. But they're one of the only other fish that can also go in an anemone without getting stung. So they're immune to the, the venom of the anemone? Yep, whereas if one of those tangs went up in there, it would be over. 
Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, have you ever, I mean, usually around here, the kind in, in the Puget Sound, they don't really sting your hand like ow. No, they, I mean, these but, ones won't sting you either like ow. So they're not like that, but to fish if they, there. If you look, see how that one grabs Yeah. Them? Wow. Yeah. They do try, but your skin it's is too thick. too thick. Now, if it gets you on one of your soft spots, like I've been cleaning and you're actually got the inside <laughs> yeah. of my arm, it'll sting you. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. But usually you're just too thick for them to go through you can kind of see the relationship like just in the look of yep. the two fish you know of the clownfish and the uh what would you say damsel damsels those are domino damsels domino damsels very cool oh wow so now we've got i noticed little hermit crabs up on the <laughs> on yep. the rocks so they can eat any little debris that floats into there that isn't able to be eaten by the anemone then huh yep and they'll get into all the little crevices and clean out everything wow they've got such little they're the little guys you know the snails can't get in some of those crevices where they can reach in and get to all of that that's very cool so what kind of lighting would you need to set this up so i mean what the, are we looking at that, here that's the thing about corals is they are very closely related to plants a lot of them rely on photosynthesis okay so you're wanting some of these corals can take huge amounts of lights especially stony corals like everything on the green rack Okay. They'll take pretty much as much light as you can pump to them, so you have to use really high-end lights. So like high UVA, UVB kind yep. of thing? And it's a lot about the spectrum too, not just how much you can pump out. You're trying to closely match a set spectrum that they get out in the wild. Gotcha. So and does that vary for different kinds, or is it all pretty... The, the spectrum is about the same, but the intensity is the real thing. So oh, okay, because some grow high on the reef, and some grow... Okay. And some like highlight, all of the small polyps down these like really highlight, and then you got that side, which is a smaller light, and it's turned down a lot, because everything on the right side of the tank enjoys lower light. All right, so we got... found deeper in the reef. And you got little UV filter glasses hanging there, if people yep. want to look. That's cool. I see Kessel light. I, I recognize that. So, yep, I'm running one Kessel in the back for the anemones just to give them a little bit of supplemental light because anemones like a real lot of light. Gotcha. You can't give them too much almost. Wow. And then the other, I run AI Primes is what they're called. Ones, okay. One's a 64 and one's a 24. Okay. So. Very cool. Same light, one's just got four LEDs and one's got two. Okay. And so they're just like real strong LED clusters yeah. in there, huh? Very cool. And so what are you doing here? I mean, this, this so looks like brine shrimp almost. It's a liquid food. or it's powder when we get it. It's called reef roids. It's what the corals eat. Reef roids. I eat <laughs> corals anyways, but I was going to show you that all of these are actually living creatures. They, they, they eat. They have a mouth in the middle. Wow. So you hang. So you kind of have to hand feed them, or it's you, you get more to them that way. Yeah, you can make them grow faster. They're happier. Lots of stuff likes to eat other than what it can just filter out of the water. Gotcha. And so, oh wow, yeah, it's actually disappearing down into the. Yeah, you'll see his mouth open up in the middle, and yeah. he'll actually put out a little bit of a uh, slime to catch it all, and then wow. he'll suck it up. <laughs> the the crab looks like it's trying to get in on yeah. the action too. He stopped dead in his tracks, like, oh, got some food. So now what you're feeding them, is that some sort of, like, um, like um, plankton or something? It's there? an engineered food. Okay. Um, so it's, it's got a lot of protein in it, a lot of fish meals. Gotcha. Basically stuff that everything in here can process and eat. So now people who have, like, a giant tank, how do they manage? Um, you can spot feed like i'm doing with a tool like this get down in there or you can broadcast feed so you just pour this in a high flow area spot feed versus and, broadcasting and kind of okay just let them fend for themselves i mean it's not necessary you, it's they'll just grow a lot slower yeah okay and when it's in a display tank you're not really looking to to more or less grow them as fast as possible right whereas like a farm tank like this the faster the better and everything enjoys getting fed, you know. And oh. I enjoy doing it. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, it's I can see where this would be really. It's a good way for you to actually take the time to stare at everything. So yeah. Really, going on. really relaxing, I bet. I mean, put your favorite music on and uh, just chill out and take care of your tanks. Wow, those guys are really reactive. And now you can see him eating. He's got his mouth wide open. Oh yeah. Sucking in that food. Wow. There's one big polyp, whereas something like this, every single one of these little heads is one polyp. Okay. So this would be 
considered this is on the edge of a soft coral and it's, it's a small polyp stony or a soft coral. So it's almost like a and hybrid this mix. This is a large isn't? polyp stony because he's just one big single Hard. polyp. Hard. Okay. So he must need. Oh, and the clam's also eating too. Yeah, the clam senses it. That's cool. The clam is totally pink from above, which is awesome. And then. And then you got stuff like this that's encrusting. So it's going to take over. That's a whole disc. Oh, it yeah. Takes over the disc. And do you use ceramic plugs? Is that what those are? Yeah. Or? Okay. And so ceramic is technically like a porous surface. And, you know, it works really well for all sorts of different critters. But as far as for coral, I'm sure that works well. It closely resembles the actual composition of the reef rocks, too. And so is this slime coming out of this? this... Yep. You see he slimed over all of that to catch it. So that the current doesn't take it away. Oh each, yeah. Each little mouth will start eating it. Oh, and then they'll reel it back in. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's just because they know the current's coming, and the current's going to take it all if they don't slime. So is it. that why you simulate current while feeding, partially, or a little bit, or more just to clean, like more move stuff around, clean and move stuff, like so that everyone gets a a, a meal. And now I saw a little shrimp too. Was that like a little... Uh, it... Yep, he was a sexy shrimp. They post anemones. He should be over here. If I can get him around there. And then you've got a yellow tang. And I saw a Pacific blue tang, too. Of some sort some sort of blue tang. I don't know the name. Yeah, there's a powder blue. Powder, powder blue. Okay. He's just in there for the time being. We're Very in cool. the process of getting a bigger setup that they're going to go in. But they're doing work in here in the meantime. Yeah, so all the fish are out feeding boy that acrylic really does filter the light and then yet again when you've got the uv yeah it i mean w when you take this off it really i mean it's different compared yeah. to what your n natural eye sees yeah and i mean the lights really don't like cameras right it's, yeah it's they're not lot, built it's for not as blue in person as it looks through most cameras right like everybody just assumes that it's like a blue light and it's it's more of a soft blue in person yeah it, it's almost like a black light or yeah. something yeah and i mean boy these fish are just beautiful though when they're when they're uh, swimming around and everything so you know in this tank i wasn't expecting that many fish so how many fish can you f oh wow there's a lot of fish so how many fish can you fit in a, is, a tank this like is this probably considered a little overstocked the tanks need a lot more water. They were babies when I got them, and we're upgrading the upstairs tank. Oh, cool. So the yellow tang I got right before the Hawaii ban, so there's been a ban yeah. in Hawaii now. Yeah, if, if you guys ha don't know, um, look into the uh, collection ban in Hawaii. It's pretty interesting. They used to be able to collect wild fish and uh i don't i don't know what the state of a coral was and whatnot but um corals not so much but the fish but the the weird thing about it is is the fish trade was about two percent yeah and you can still go fish for all of these fish right for food line and sinker for food yeah all you want without a license yeah that's the weird thing about hawaii is when i went there and i met my friends who were hawaiian that i went to college with they're like, oh, yeah, just get a spear, brah. And, mm -hmm. like, they're like, just get a medical tubing and uh, a spear, and we'll go out swimming. And we literally just used a wrist sling. And... When we were there, we saw uh, Nassau tangs uh, that were, they go for three to $400 a fish here. <laughs> yeah. Just piled up in a cooler for sale on the side of the road for a buck a piece, you know? Like, for food? For fish tacos and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it's insane. Like, yeah, it is wild. So, you gotta tell me about this uh, high-tech system, and I feel like this is a different subject than this first video, so let's split it into two parts. So, thanks for watching if you guys were just getting this intro into what's up with this aquarium and all that and my buddy chase here thank you so much for yeah. explaining the basics of a coral you know setup like this um i guess a farm tank would be the term um or or display half or farm half me hoarding some of the stuff that i like okay <laughs> all right and again the difference with the uv filter is huge so we'll slip that back on but we're going to talk about the technology and work that goes into keeping this other than the feeding 
uh, in this next video. So stay tuned. Um, please like and uh, comment. Let me know if you guys know more about salt water than I do. I guarantee that's true with pretty much everyone probably. Uh, so I'm totally learning here and uh, it's always been fascinating, but I'm, I'm a fish out of water <laughs> with this one. So uh, we'll see you guys in the next video and hopefully I'll know more by the end of that one.